Hi, this is Amr Abdigawad, and in this lecture, we're going to discuss fractures of the bees of the fifth metatarsals in children. What are the objectives of this lecture? First, we would like to describe the anatomy of the fifth metatarsal, and then we're going to differentiate the X-ray picture of the normal growth plate and the fracture of the base of the fifth metatarsal. Then we're going to explain the clinical presentation of fracture of the base of the fifth metatarsal, and we're going to outline the different types of fractures of the base of the fifth metatarsal. And finally, we're going to list the indication for orthopedic referral for children presenting with fractures of the base of the fifth metatarsal. A good source that you can and uses this book written by myself and Dr. Naga. So let's start with the anatomy of the fifth metatarsal. Here is the fifth metatarsal. So this is the small toe. This is the fifth metatarsal here. And this is the base of the fifth metatarsal. Uh, and here you will have the attachment of the peroneus brevis. So the peroneus brevis comes from the lateral side, inserts into uh, the lateral side of the fifth uh, metatarsal. Sometimes with inversion injury, they can be um, some sort of avulsion of part of the bone. Uh, also, uh, in this area, the blood supply is minimal. Uh, to the bone uh, so if you get a fracture here you may develop a delayed union or non-union here is an x-ray uh, for the fifth metatarsal here um, as you can see this is the growth plate of the fifth metatarsal the growth plate appears uh, around the age of nine years and then closes around the age of 12 years in girls and about 14 years in boys uh, uh, the growth plate of the fifth metatarsal, the proximal growth plate, is parallel to the metatarsal. So here is the axis of the metatarsal, here is the growth plate. If you see, it runs parallel to the uh, fifth metatarsal. Uh, most of the fracture, as we're going to see, uh, are perpendicular to the axis uh, of the metatarsal. They run this way. So if you see a line here uh, between the age of 9 uh, and uh, 12 to 14, uh, with that is uh, longitudinal, uh, I mean parallel to the uh, long axis of the fifth, fifth metatarsal, uh, this is most probably a growth plate and not a fracture. So what's the clinical presentation for base of the fifth metatarsal injury? So the mechanism of injury, as we said before, is usually inversion twisting injury. So uh, the child will tell you that he had a twisting injury of the ankle. Uh, this was followed by pain and swelling of the lateral aspect of the foot, where it's anatomically over the base of the fifth metatarsal. So let's speak about the anatomic classification of the base of the fifth metatarsal. Uh, so this is uh, the fifth metatarsal. This is the lateral uh, aspect of the foot. This is the uh, fifth metatarsal. And here is the proximal part. So this is the base of the first met fifth metatarsal. Uh, this is the physis and this is uh, the apophysis. And as we said before, the physis uh, is uh, parallel to the long axis of the fifth metatarsal. Uh, so where is the fracture can occur? The fracture can occur uh, at the physis, it can occur at the metaphysial part, it can occur at the metaphysio-diaphysial part, or it can occur into the proximal part of the diaphysis. So if the fractures occur at the uh, physis, uh, you will not be able to see the fracture line because it will occur uh, through the growth plate. However, uh, the, uh, the apophysis will be uh, widely displaced from the base uh, of the fifth, uh, uh, from the metaphysial physical part of the fifth metatarsal. So you will notice that the, this distance here had increased if the fracture occurred through this uh, area. Uh, the uh, second part is the fracture which happened into the metaphysial part uh, and these fractures usually heal very quick and they don't need uh, a prolonged immobilization. Actually, the patient can be weight-bearing as tolerated. Uh, this is the area that we said that has minimal blood supply. So this is the metaphysial, diaphysial area. Uh, and these are the fracture that needs prolonged immobilization as we're going to see later. And this is the proximal part of the diaphysis. These are usually stress fracture uh, that needs uh, uh, most probably a surgical intervention. So let's go again uh, through the types of um, fractures of the base of the fifth metatarsal. So as you said, we can get avulsion of the apophysis. And uh, what you will see is you will see widening of the physis area here. And this is a stable injury. Patient can be weight bearing immediately uh, in like a hard sole shoe or a boot or even uh, some sort of ACE uh, band. Um, the metaphysial fracture, which uh, happens in this area, uh, these are again also stable injuries and they can be treated um, by weight bearing immediately uh, again in the same thing cam boot or a hard sole shoe uh, or uh, some sort of ace banding uh, these are the fractures that are prone to non-union as we discussed in the anatomy the blood supply here 
um, is minimal uh, and this is what's called sometimes true Jones fracture these are unstable injury they may develop non-union uh, so the treatment is cast non-weight bearing so the child has to be in a non-weight bearing cast till the fracture heals and if this child um, is uh, athlete and he would like to go earlier to uh, to his uh, sports um, it is recommended that he gets internal fixation uh, by screw so this is the area that um, is prone to non-union in this area is the metaphysio-diaphysial area of the base of the fifth metatarsal it's called true Jones fracture and how can you define that if you see the fracture lying coming between the fourth and the fifth that's a metaphysio diaphysial area so if your fracture line comes in this area which is the junction between the fifth metatarsal and the cuboid bone this is a metaphysial fracture stable can be treated immediately with bearing if the fracture line comes in this area between the uh, fourth between the fifth and the fourth metatarsal this is a metaphy metaphysio diaphysial fracture this is a um, fracture that can develop non-union this child has to be put in a cast non with bearing till it heals or you may uh, benefit from internal fixation uh, fractures which happen in this area uh, uh, these are usually stress fractures uh, it happens in certain conditions in which the child is in various position and he is walking on his fifth metatarsal so let's go through some examples so this is an um, 11 year old boy uh, he came twisted his uh, ankle and he's having a foot pain so the pain is not localized over the medial or lateral malleus but it is localized over uh, the base of the fifth metatarsal so when you see a patient coming with this history you order foot x-ray you don't order an ankle x-ray despite that the mechanism of action was twisting of the uh, ankle uh, however uh, the pain is uh, localized over the base of the fifth metatarsal so you order foot x-rays three views AP oblique and lateral and if you can see here obviously you can see the fracture here in the AP it's more obvious in the oblique and if you look closely in the lateral you will see the fracture here so if you see this is a fracture that goes into the junction between the fifth uh, metatarsal and the uh, cuboid bone which is this bone so this is a stable fracture uh, this is what's called uh, the pseudo Jones fracture or a fracture that affects uh, the metaphyseal area and these fractures heal very quick so the treatment is weight bearing aspirated you can give them a boot you can give them hard sole shoe uh, you can give them uh, just a strap if the uh, if the pain is not severe uh, and they can be weight bearing aspirated you don't have to uh, follow up with the x-rays so here is the fracture again uh, this is a metaphysial fracture or pseudo jones fracture very stable does not need immobilization does not need cast Another example to gain more experience, so this is a 12-year-old, one of my patients, I'm getting an x-ray for a different reason, but you can see here, there is a line here, however, this line is parallel, as we said, to the longitudinal axis, so this is not a fracture, this is a growth plate, this part is the secondary ossification center, um, and it, as we said, that appears in, around the age of 9, and disappears around the age of 13 uh, in girls, and 14 to 15 in boys, uh, you can uh, differentiate that the, usually the growth plate is uh, parallel to the long axis of the fifth metatarsal uh, however the fracture is usually longitudinal and goes in this direction another example of a growth plate and secondary ossification center that we can see in a more skeletally mature child um, again you can uh, see that it is parallel with the fifth metatarsal so another example this is one of my patient he was in the 20s um, he was uh, doing crossfit and then he felt severe pain in his foot uh, over the fifth metatarsal if you see the x-rays here the line is not going to this area we said if the line goes to this area this is a stable fracture patient can be weight bearing as tolerated if you see the line is not going to this area it's going to uh, towards the articulation between four and fifths uh, so this is these fractures uh, usually takes long time to heal uh, if you're going to treat them in a cast it needs to be a non-weight bearing cast for a long time so the patient has to be uh, in a cast a short leg cast that uh, and non-weight bearing and then follow up till the fracture is um, fully healed however this patient uh, he was very active and he decided that he wants uh, to go back to sport activity sooner so we uh, proceeded with surgical intervention so uh, through a very small incision we inserted uh, this screw uh, intramedullary inside the fifth metatarsal so it's inside the medulla and it works to compress the fracture so the patient can be uh, weight bearing earlier and does not have to be in a cast for a long time thank you very much all my videos are for educational purpose only please consult your doctor before taking any decision thank you